60%. That's the amount of survivors who will experience some form of cognitive impairment after their stroke. And you may be wondering why I'm talking about cognition on a video that's supposed to be about food. Well, it's because they go hand in hand. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the top 10 evidence-based foods to improve brain health and to slow cognitive decline after stroke. Let's get into it. Before I get to the top 10 foods, I wanna break down where I got this list from and the evidence behind it. But if you don't care about any of that, you can go ahead and jump to this timestamp to get right to the list. However, if you aren't interested in the evidence, hang with me for about a minute. This list comes from research on the MIND diet, and this stands for the Mediterranean DASH Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. You can see why they have the acronym. And it's a blend of two different dietary approaches, the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, AKA High Blood Pressure. It's been shown in multiple studies with the general population that a higher level of adherence to the MIND diet, sticking to MIND diet foods, generally reduced cognitive decline and the risk of developing dementia. But a 2019 study from Rush University Medical Center specifically looked at this diet and its effectiveness on reducing and slowing cognitive decline after stroke. And the researchers found that there is a strong association between the MIND diet and slowing cognitive decline after stroke. The researchers also found that it was more effective than eating just the Mediterranean or the DASH diet alone. There is an important distinction with this study, and it's that participants really only saw a benefit if they had a moderate to high level of adherence to the MIND diet, meaning that if they weren't sticking to the MIND diet foods, they really didn't get the cognitive and brain benefits. All right, enough with the background, let's get into the foods. Number one, whole grains. You wanna to aim to get at least three servings a day of whole grains. And it's important to note, you don't wanna just look on food packaging and get anything that says, hey, this is made with whole grains. You actually want to look for whole grains that are in the least processed form you can. This includes food like brown rice, wild rice, rolled oats, barley, and quinoa. And there are a few reasons why whole grains are thought to be good for brain health. So the brain's primary source of energy is glucose. And glucose is the building block of carbohydrates, which includes whole grains. Whole grains are what we call complex carbohydrates, meaning it takes the body longer to break them down, so it provides a longer, steadier stream of energy for the body and the brain. Whole grains are also full of vitamin B, which can help to reduce inflammation in the body and the brain, as well as to improve memory. Number two, green leafy vegetables. You wanna to try to get at least six servings per week, and these foods include romaine lettuce, spinach, kale, mustard and turnip greens, as well as cabbage. Now, interestingly, there was a 2018 study that looked at older adults in the United States, and they found that those who ate green leafy vegetables at least one to two servings per day were on average 11 years younger cognitively than those who rarely or never ate green leafy vegetables. These nutrients may help to reduce the severity of lesions on the brain, which can lead to cognitive decline. They can help to reduce oxidative stress and cellular dysfunction. This is a way that um, our cells can become damaged and not perform as optimally as they should. And they can also help to reduce inflammation in the brain. Number three, other vegetables. Try to get at least one serving a day of other vegetables. We don't wanna just focus on green leafy vegetables and forget about everything else. So this might mean including cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, which are high in folate and other vitamins that can help improve memory. Or you could maybe include orange vegetables like carrots and sweet potatoes. These are high in nutrients that help to fight oxidative stress, which we talked about can damage our cells. Number four, nuts. Try to get at least five servings of nuts in a week and specifically focus on walnuts. These are high in omega-3 fatty acids and have a ton of health benefits. Regular walnut consumption may reduce the risk of heart disease, type two diabetes, and other cardiovascular issues because they can help to lower total and bad or LDL cholesterol, and they can help to raise good or HDL cholesterol. They can also help to reduce blood pressure and inflammation. They can also increase anti antioxidant capacity in our bodies. And this is what we use to help fight oxidative stress and other cellular damage. An easy way to incorporate more walnuts into your diet is to do a small handful on your oats in the morning, or perhaps just have a handful of nuts in the afternoon for a snack. Number five, berries. 
get at least two servings a week of berries. And this includes foods like strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. Berries contain antioxidants and compounds called flavonoids, which help to protect the brain. They help to reduce inflammation, they help brain cells communicate more effectively with one another, and they also help to boost neuroplasticity. Now, a great way to get more berries in is to have a berry smoothie. This is what I personally do. It is my go-to thing every night. So I take some mixed frozen berries, two scoops of vanilla protein powder, and water. I blend it up and I enjoy it. I love to have a sweet treat after dinner, which I know isn't a great thing, but this way I get in a little extra protein, I get my berries in, and I satisfy my sweet tooth. Number six, fatty fish. Get at least one serving of fatty fish per week. And these fish are those that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. And these fatty acids are so important because they are protective of brain health. They can help to improve the circulation in the brain, help to improve mental performance, decrease memory issues related to aging, and reduce brain cell death and inflammation in the brain. Examples of fatty fish include herring, anchovies, sardines, and salmon. Number seven, beans. Get at least four servings a week of beans, and technically we can include all legumes in this category, which includes lentils as well. Now, this is important because if beans tend to make you a little gassy, you can actually swap them out for lentils and still get all of the great benefits. Legumes are super high in vitamin B. Personally, I love beans, and my favorite way to cook them is in the Instant Pot. I can throw them in dry, set the timer for an hour, and then boom, they're ready. But you can do it on the stovetop as well. Now, I usually eat them in a burrito or have like bean tacos. They're a super quick and easy way to prep your lunch. Number eight, poultry. Get at least two servings a week of poultry. This includes foods like chicken, turkey, quail, and duck. Like beans, poultry is really high in vitamin B, which we know is really protective of brain health. It's also a leaner meat, so you don't have to worry as much about saturated fat content as you do with fattier meats. To get the most benefit from poultry, make sure that you're not battering and frying it. You want to either bake it or roast it to get the most nutritional benefit and not overload your poultry with fat. And make sure to pair it with lots of vegetables and whole grains. Number nine, olive oil. There aren't any specific recommendations on servings of olive oil per day, but a good rule of thumb is that if you're cooking something that calls for added fat, use olive oil rather than say butter or other vegetable oils. Now in a 2024 JAMA Network Open article, which is a publication of the American Medical Association, they found that out of 92,000 participants over the course of 28 years, those that consumed seven grams of olive oil per day, which is equal to around half of a tablespoon, showed a 28% decreased risk of dementia-related death. The authors in the study also report on the mechanism of how olive oil is helpful to our brains. It can help to improve endothelial function, which endothelial cells are those that line our blood vessels. It can also help our body to break down fats more effectively, and it can help to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation in the brain. An easy way to get more olive oil into your diet is to use it when you're cooking vegetables. Whether you're sauteing on the stovetop or you're roasting veggies in the oven, use olive oil instead of butter, margarine, or other vegetable oils. Number 10, tea and coffee. So again, we don't really have a specific serving recommendation here, although I am gonna cover a 2021 study in just a few seconds that outlined some. Now, when we're talking about tea and coffee, I'm kind of boiling this down to caffeine content, no pun intended. While there may be other chemicals or compounds in different types of tea and coffee that can be beneficial for brain health, we're specifically looking at caffeine. It can help to improve attention and concentration and even improve mood. It's important to note though that in some people, it can increase anxiety and for some, they may experience withdrawal symptoms. So in that 2021 study, they looked at 365,000 participants in the UK for an average of around 11 years. And what they found was that those who consumed two to three cups of either tea or coffee per day had a 32% lower stroke risk and a 28% lower risk of developing dementia. And most importantly, they found that in stroke survivors, those that had three to six cups of both coffee and tea per day had the lowest incidence of post-stroke dementia. Now, of course, I have to note here that if you're thinking of increasing your caffeine intake, make sure that you talk to your doctor because it may not be right for your individual situation. 
We all know that eating healthier foods is good for us, but sometimes it helps to have a guide. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you'll incorporate some of these brain boosting foods into your diet. As always, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave it a like. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notifications for when I post new videos. Post Stroke is a nonprofit and you can help us keep our content free, either by giving us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below, by giving us a one-time donation via PayPal, or by becoming a Patreon member, where in exchange for a monthly donation, you get access to cool perks like social media shoutouts, behind the scenes footage, and even YouTube shoutouts, of which I have some today. A huge thank you to all of our patrons, but especially thank you to Heather G, Ryan D, and Modus Nova in our Empowerer tier. We can't do what we do without you all. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.